Samurais in popular culture are pretty bad ass. I mean, there's no denying it. You got Samurai Jack, Wolf, Kukichio, hell, even Silver Samurai. You watch a Kurosawa movie and you just feel like swinging around a stick and acting like an idiot outside in your backyard. But that's pop culture. What about the real Samurais? What were they like? Besides the iconic armor and the katanas that weren't bought at a mall, the Samurai followed a set of values or virtues known as Bushido. Bushido means literally military knight ways, the ways which fighting nobles should observe in their daily life, as well as in their vocation. So you may be asking where we can find this official set of written code. Like come on, give me an author, give me a book title. Unfortunately, there isn't really one written code going over all the ideas of Bushido. Instead, Bushido was a more naturally arising set of values that grew from socializing. It is not a written code. At best, it consists of a few maxims handed down from mouth to mouth, or coming from the pen of some well-known warrior or savant. So wait, if there's no official written code on Bushido, then what the hell am I quoting? I'm working off the text entitled Bushido the Soul of Japan, written by the early 20th century author Nitobe Inazo. And with this text, we'll explore the virtues that he believes were followed by the samurai. If you've read Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics, you'll notice a very similar format with this book that elaborates on these specific virtues one by one. In this video, we'll be covering eight of these virtues. The first virtue that Nitobe associates with Bushido is justice. All right, now philosophers have argued over and over again about the definition of justice, but here's how justice is defined with Bushido specifically. I speak of Gidi, literally the right reason, but which came in time to mean a vague sense of duty, which public opinion expected an incumbent to fulfill. In its original and unalloyed sense, it meant duty, pure and simple. So we have this idea of justice that isn't very clearly defined, but is instead kind of vague. But you know, having a vague sense of duty does still provide some motivational value. Like, you know, you could pat yourself on the back if you believe you're doing the right thing. But because this vague idea of justice was heavily influenced by social norms, Nitobe explains that this whole thing kind of got f***ed up. Because of this artificiality, Gidi in time degenerated into a vague sense of propriety, called upon to explain this and sanction that. But still, it's fair to say that this duty to do what's right, even if it's not clearly defined, was part of the Bushido code. The next virtue mentioned is courage. Now we have a pretty good idea of what courage is, so we don't have to go into it conceptually. But what's interesting is how samurais cultivated courage practically. For samurais, it started when they were very young. Samurai's sons were let down the steep valleys of hardship, and spurred to Sisyphus-like tasks. Occasional deprivation of food or exposure to cold was considered a highly efficacious test for inuring them to endurance. All right, now no one is expecting you to put yourself through extreme hardships to gain the courage to face those things in the future. However, this kinda sounds like exposure therapy, where you come into contact with that which you fear in order to get used to it and not fear it anymore. You know, like how you might be shy, but with socializing more and more with strangers, you slowly whittle that fear down. Moving on to the third virtue, we have benevolence. Benevolence is a kind of mercy to others, which is pretty helpful for someone with a big ass sword that slice anyone up. Bushi no Nasake, the tenderness of a warrior, had a sound which appealed at once to whatever was noble in us. Where it recognized due regard to justice, and where mercy did not remain merely a certain state of mind, but where it was backed with power to save or kill. So mercy seems to get its power by the ability to not be merciful, to actually do harm. Cause you know, if this weak kid comes up and is like, hey, I'm gonna be merciful to you, then it doesn't really have the same amount of weight as some big ass soldier with a machine gun granting you mercy, you know? Now Nitobe also notes that this benevolence helps us consider the suffering of others, to acknowledge it. To be truly merciful, you gotta understand the consequences of your actions towards another person. You have to put yourself in their shoes. So that's just another little bonus with benevolence. Virtue number four is on politeness. Now look, we have ideas on what politeness is, but it seems like the motivation behind your politeness is what truly matters. Politeness is a poor virtue if it is actuated only by a fear of offending good taste, whereas it should be the outward manifestation of a sympathetic regard for the feelings of others. So as a high schooler, I went to this thing called Cotillion, where you basically learn manners. I got to slow dance with some girls I found attracted, so it's aight. But learning all these stupid manners didn't really reveal the reason behind these manners. 
Like, do I not want to offend others? I don't give a shit. I'm still in high school. Who am I trying to impress here? But if you look at politeness and manners, not in terms of a fear of offending others, but instead as a natural result of sympathy, then for me it clicks. Alright, the fifth virtue is truthfulness. And like courage, this doesn't need a super long explanation because we probably all understand truthfulness. But unlike those who hold a lot of power in our society like politicians, the samurai seem to believe that their high social rank required that they uphold their honesty. The Bushi held that his high social position demanded a loftier standard of veracity than that of the tradesman and peasant. Bushi no Ichigon, the word of a samurai, was sufficient guarantee of the truthfulness of an assertion. Now virtue number six is honor, and this is the virtue that we often see highlighted in popular culture. And Nitobe also believes that honor is one of the really big virtues for the samurai. The sense of honor, implying a vivid consciousness of personal dignity and worth, could not fail to characterize the samurai, born and bred to value the duties and privileges of their profession. You see, many things in life are fleeting. You eat a good burger, you get laid, you stub your toe. These things are impactful, but they don't last forever. Your name, however, and the reputation it holds is something that remains even after you pass away. Again, similar to Aristotle, it's almost like how he talks about how virtue will survive way past any fleeting sensual pleasures. And here it seems like your dignity and character is longer lasting than other things. But honor is interesting in that it can lead to some pretty bad results. Like if you're a samurai and someone insults your name or brings you shame, how should you respond? In the name of honor, deeds were perpetrated which can find no justification in the Code of Bushido. So while honor is probably one of the most important virtues in Bushido, it could also be very destructive and go counter to the other virtues. Alright, virtue number 7 is kinda related to honor, and that is loyalty. A samurai is loyal to his master, which in many instances was the state. Again, loyalty is pretty straightforward, but what's interesting is what happens when the samurai disagrees with his master. Nitobe explains that if there was a disagreement, a samurai would try his best to persuade the master against their position. But if they were unsuccessful, the master's position will reign supreme. And in many cases, the samurai would demonstrate that he was being honest and loyal with his objections by killing himself. In the modern day West, this sounds very different to us, probably because of the higher significance we place on individuality, but that's just a guess. And lastly, we have the eighth virtue of self-control. It was considered unmanly for a samurai to betray his emotions on his face. The most natural affections were kept under control, calmness of behavior, composure of mind, should not be disturbed by passion of any kind. So this is kind of stoic sounding, not the philosophy, but the general attitude of being somewhat cold or emotionless. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you find no outlet for these emotions. This doesn't mean you just bottle this all up. The suppression of feelings being thus steadily insisted upon, they find their safety valve in poetic aphorism. So it's almost like there's artistic ways of expressing your emotions rather than socially doing it. And there are some benefits to this approach, because a not so good third party who you become vulnerable with could betray that trust and do some real harm. When you express your emotions artistically, you don't risk someone judging you in a negative way. It's a fairly safe way to get something out of you. I mean, obviously it's preferable to have a person you trust to confide in, but hey, artistic expression is also a pretty dope way. So those are the eight major virtues associated with Bushido, the moral philosophy of the samurai. Obviously, we didn't talk about things like history because, you know, this is a philosophy channel. But if you have some knowledge or corrections you'd like to drop, then add it to the comments below. Also, share your thoughts on these virtues because obviously there are some things I wouldn't apply to my life at all. But you know, the ideas on artistically expressing your emotions or being polite for the sake of sympathy seem fairly applicable even today. If you've been digging this video, be a good neighbor and throw me a subscription. Like the video, hit the bell, and share it with someone you haven't talked to in a while. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.